Uganda. Its economy is growing and people's lives are improving. But this progress is already impacted by the effects of climate change. If you speak about destruction of infrastructure, if you speak about destruction of crops, if you speak about destruction of roads, if of housing, the people affected, the victims, it's huge, it's a huge loss to the economy. From the streets of Kampala to the hills of Mount Elgon and the banks of the Mpanga River, unpredictable weather events such as droughts, floods and landslides are already threatening this country's ecosystems and livelihoods. Uganda's population is rapidly increasing. Water consumption, fuel wood burning, forests disappearing, all resources are being impacted on. Uganda's economy is heavily dependent on our natural resource base. These resources are under threat from the impacts of climate change. The poor and rural communities will greatly be affected by uh, these shifts in weather parameters. Communities that are dependent on extracting resources from the land. The cost of adaptation is high, but the cost of not adapting the cost of inaction is higher. If Uganda doesn't adapt, climate change will hold back economic growth. Building resilience is about increasing the ability of the population and the economy to be able to absorb the shocks that are brought about by the current climate change, but also the predicted future climate change. In Uganda's capital, Kampala, home to one and a half million people, climate change is already making life much more difficult for many. In the past 15 years, flooding has increased, adding pressures to a city which is already struggling from a growing population. Kampala is made up of hills and valleys. So most of the settlements have gone upslope so whenever it rains, there is a lot of water that is coming from these rain rooftops on the hill slopes. Wetland areas are the main drainage uh, systems for this city. Unfortunately, they have been blocked by developments. People are building in wetlands, largely because uh, there is no alternative. There is no land available for these people to live. Flooding also causes water pollution, as sewage plants overflow and contaminated runoff makes its way to Lake Victoria. This in turn leads to serious health problems, such as cholera. Then the friends who came here, it was very, very, very full. Students couldn't sit in the classes. Even the teachers couldn't teach. So the school stopped. The city's transport networks are also at the mercy of flooding. Kampala is the center of the whole country. Most of the economic uh, activities, industrialization and shopping is around. Those flooding zones are the arteries to other parts of the country. And therefore, when it floods, it's like cascading across to all other sectors of the economy, and the counter comes to standstill. But there are measures that the city's planners can take to prepare for an uncertain climate ahead. Measures that will benefit Uganda's population, even if the climate stabilizes. Both the private sector and the government have a role to play. We already have a cabinet directive to cancel all titles in wetland areas. We are prioritizing these areas for green parks and also for drainage systems. It will require both public and private sector investment to make the city's whole infrastructure more resilient. To make this happen, there needs to be a new mindset which prioritizes public interests over private gains.
It's not just in the capital that climate change is having a negative impact on Uganda's economic success. The weather has changed over the years and temperatures have actually become warmer. Here in the hills below Mount Elgon, on Uganda's eastern border, one of the country's key economic assets is under threat. The country exports around 192 million kilograms of coffee per year, and the coffee sector employs over 3.5 million households. The Baduda area of Mount Elgon is home to many coffee growers. The population here has increased by 80% in the last 25 years. Along with climate change, it's putting increasing stresses on the land and its resources. The areas that are suitable for coffee growing are reducing with increasing temperatures. It is predicted that um, by 2050, the income that is coming from coffee could reduce by 50%. Arabica coffee in particular is very sensitive to, to temperatures. Very sensitive to temperatures. And given that uh, the temperatures have changed, then increasingly the land area suitable for Arabica coffee growing is shifting altitudinally going up. As we move up, we are cutting more trees from the national park to enable people to get livelihood, planting and mean cropping and so on. So it's going to increase on the effects of climate change as we move up because a lot of uh, trees are going to be destroyed in favor of settlements. Landslides regularly reap devastation across the Baduda district, leaving death and chaos in their wake. <laughs> Even minor landslides can destroy valuable coffee trees. They block roads, vital to transport the crop for export and destroy livestock too. It takes up to 50 years to fully recover a landslide area. So what can be done to stem the damage created by these weather extremes? As a measure to mitigate against uh, these bad effects of climate change, we are encouraging and creating awareness to our farmers to practice climate smart agriculture. We think about technologies for irrigation that are appropriate for small-scale farmers. This is the hill area, so to stop a lot of water runoff, we make trenches. And not only that, but we have planted trees. Sweet trees play a number of roles. One, they keep the temperatures cooler or lower, and that's what coffee requires. Two, they protect the soils from heavy rains. Three, they increase biodiversity. So without shade trees, we expect doom. In the west of Uganda, one of the country's major rivers, a vital resource, is also under pressure from climate change. Over two million people rely on the Vampanga River, and they use it for different uh, purposes. There is hydropower generation. There are farmers who use the river for irrigation and watering their animals. We have those who use water for domestic use. Then we have industries and other purposes. But the area's water resources are under threat. Sudden, heavy rains wash silt into the water in the towns, making it undrinkable. In other areas, decreasing rainfall means that the river level is dropping. The water levels are changing because, one, cultivation of crops by farmers up to the brim of the river. Number two is burning. When it rains after burning, still siltation takes place. Number three is grazing cows or watering cows into the river. The Mpanga River is also vital for generating electricity. This power station is operating under capacity. One of the reasons is not having adequate water to run the turbines uh, because of fluctuation of water in the Mpanga River. When it comes to the dry spell, they are worse than they used to be. 
the water can reduce it uh, to the lowest levels. Reducing the impact of climate change on the Mpanga River is going to need action on all levels. Climate change adaptation and mitigation is a collective responsibility. The locals themselves can have a role to play. But on the other hand, government, international community, and all of us have a role to play. There is a pressing need to balance these conflicting demands on the river, to benefit the local communities, but also to continue to supply energy. Over and above 90% in rural areas depends on um, biomass resources. It's fuel, wood, and charcoal. While in uh, urban areas, we depend on hydroelectric power and charcoal. The loss in energy has extremely high economic costs. Protecting the river's water flow will help ensure that the hydro plant can deliver much needed power. Already the demand for energy um, is higher than the supply. The projections are that it's going to increase because the population is increasing and um, economic growth is quite high. So there is need to diversify electricity generation in terms of investing in solar energy, investing in geothermal energy. We can invest a lot uh, in energy infrastructure. Climate change continues to be the most defining problem of the country of Uganda and I believe in many years to come. The cost of inaction is 20 times greater than the cost of adaptation. When you adapt, you do things better. You're making people more resilient, you have more production, more income, and better welfare. It's a huge cost if we don't act right away. 